Anyway, you should see uh, we're talking to today about intermediate Python functions. So I think you guys know what a basic function call is. We're going to uh, basically first off recap what is a function, why do we use it, why is it important, and then we're going to go into some more advanced stuff. So these are our goals for today. Uh, again, I'm sorry, not again, but remember you're going to have the uh, recording afterwards, so I would suggest uh, kind of following along, maybe having VS Code open and coding along with me, but it's not necessary. So the important thing is just uh, let's, let's pay attention, and if anything is confusing you, I can... Uh, uh, answer questions at the end. You can also rewatch the uh, the lecture. So yeah, let's get on into it. Let's first ask us uh, what is a Python function and why do we want to use it. So right off the bat, why do we use functions? And the big answer is code reuse. Basically, doing so allows us to save time and eliminate potential bugs. So actually, let me uh, hope this doesn't mess up the uh, streaming. But yeah, let me quickly make a diagram kind of showing why functions are so useful. So imagine you have this function called, uh, let's say, def uh, calculate sum. And then you have a list of numbers. And uh, all this function does is it adds up a list of numbers and returns the sum, as the, the title would uh, suggest. So let's say you have these uh, four different files that all use this, uh, that all have a different, sorry, uh, calc sum function inside of it. So let's say that, you know, these four different files all have a different function. Or maybe it's the same function, it's just cut and paste separately into these four different files. So what happens if our calc sum function has a, has a bug in it? What if it's wrong? Guess what this means? This means now that we have to update this code in four different files. And what if we forgot about this file? Well, there's going to be bugs, right? So this is this is basically the heart and soul of why we use functions. The idea is code that does one specific thing only exists in one specific place. So if there's problems with this code, all we have to do is update it in this one specific place and now all four of these functions all four of these files will have the correct code. So again, we don't want to have duplicate uh, functions across our code. We basically just want to have code that references the same function. And that's basically why we want to use functions. And in fact, whenever a, a function call is made, basically all we're doing is we're cutting and pasting the, the function code onto where we just called it. So yeah, that's the high level reason, uh, uh, reason why we use functions. We basically just want to reuse our code. Uh, if we need to use a sum function in 10 different places, we don't want to rewrite it 10 times. And if there's a bug, we don't want to have to fix it 10 times. So this is just for efficiency and to make sure that the system kind of all works together. Uh, so how do we write functions? You might recall uh, the main way is we start off with the def keyword. So we start off with def. That means we're defining a new function. Next up is the function's name. And finally, parentheses with the parameters inside. We'll get to parameters in a second. And a colon. And then after that, obviously, is the actual function body. So again, this is how we actually write functions in Python. We'll have plenty of code examples soon enough to kind of uh, uh, work this out. And uh, yeah, how do we call or execute functions? How do we actually run the function to do what it's supposed to do? Uh, as we know, it's just the name of the function, parentheses, and then you send in the parameters inside of the parentheses. And uh, you might want to save it off, right? So you can just do uh, variable equals. So you can save off what the function is giving you so you can do some with it later. And then finally, uh, this is going to kind of be the main thing we're covering today. So what are parameters slash arguments? So they're the things that you send to the function, right? Uh, and there's actually a distinction between these terms. They're usually used interchangeably, but there, there really is a difference. So uh, parameters are the variables listed in the function definition. So in this case, this parameter, literally called parameter, is the parameter. However, an argument are the actual values you send to that parameter. So in this case, parameter is the parameter, and uh, the argument when we call the function is 5. So that's basically the distinction between the terms. If you remember classes, it's kind of like the difference between a class definition and a class instance. You kind of think of it that way. But yeah, so let's uh, get into some more advanced function stuff. And uh, if, if any of this is new to you or uh, you're having trouble with functions, you can kind of uh, ping me after class and I can give you some refresher or some uh, 
uh, problems to go over. But yeah, well, let's let's get on into it. All right, so right off the bat, uh, something we can do is send different data types as arguments. So we we can send uh, uh, numbers, we can send strings, we can also send more advanced stuff like lists or dictionaries or even instances of classes and they're accessed inside of the function the same way they would be accessed outside of the function. So let's try this function right now. Let's uh, open up uh, VS Code. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's create a dictionary. Uh, let's see. A zero, B two, C three. Okay, and yeah, let's uh, just make a function that prints out a dictionary. So I think we're going to do four key in D. Print uh, D key. Okay. And then uh, print dictionary. With dict. Uh, let's save this and run it. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, wrong syntax there. My bad, guys. I've been uh, coding in C Sharp for a while. There we go. All right, and uh, yeah, actually, I have this uh, plugin called Wolf that just shows the uh, my print statements without even having to run the program. So as you can see here, it's printing out zero, two, and three. Yeah, the the whole point of this is that we can send anything to a function that we would otherwise use. So again, we we can send dictionaries, we can send lists, we can send uh, instances of the classes. So that's the the first lesson for uh, arguments. Uh, also, return types are the same. You can return stuff from functions. So, uh, in this case, we can return the dictionary as well. So we can say uh, new dictionary equals this function, and it's again, it's returning the dictionary it received. So now new dict is going to be that, and yeah, let's just uh, call print dictionary on the function as a return, and we can expect to see uh, the same thing here. Sorry, my, uh, oh, yeah, it's just printing out twice here. Yeah, again, the point is we can send and return uh, any type that we want from functions. So, uh, yeah, imagine you wrote a class, like uh, a class that holds data. You can write a function that takes in an instance of that class and does stuff with it. Uh, okay, let's move on. So next up, we have arbitrary arguments. The point of this is you're not sure how many arguments a function will need. You can declare an arbitrary argument with the asterisk symbol here. So uh, this basically combines all your arguments into a tuple. And you might recall a tuple is just a list, except you can't modify it. So the idea here is we want to uh, print names. We don't know how many names are going to be sent, so we can just uh, put this star in front of it. And yeah, what it does is it takes all of the parameters that you add to the function and combines them into one tuple so you can treat it like a list basically. So yeah, let's uh let's write a function that takes advantage of this. So let's say uh I don't know, def print all Pokemon. Let's say that. And uh, again, to declare this arbitrary argument, we need to start off with the asterisk symbol and let's call the argument pokes. So, uh, I think we can do this. I think we can do for poke in pokes uh, print poke. And again, the idea of this function is now that we have the power of this arbitrary argument, we can send in as many parameters as we want. We could send in one, we could send in 20. So let's give it a shot with just one first. Say print all Pokemon Bulbasaur. Okay, as you can see, it's just printing out Bulbasaur, right? What happens if we add a whole bunch more Pokemon here? So let's add our, our boy Squirtle, Charmander, and why not Pikachu? Let's complete the set with a Pokemon Yellow. And look, as you can see here, it's printing out all of these different things. So again, the point of this uh, arbitrary argument is... Uh, now in, uh, we can send one to infinite number of names. And again, it's basically what it's doing under the hood is it's combining all of the uh, parameters you sent into one tuple so you can treat them as one big chunk that you can access just like a list. And uh, again, I'll, I'll cover the code one more time. So for example, this function, print all Pokemon, 
we can uh, use it for as uh, many or as few Pokemon as we need. It works when you send it one parameter. It works when you send infinitely. So yeah, we, we could basically accomplish the same thing by just sending in a, a list as a parameter, right? So let's let's rewrite this uh, to just use a list instead of a uh, like print Poke's list. And uh, it would literally be the same code, right? So let's, uh, of course, we would have to, we would have to call it differently, right? So we couldn't call print Poke's list uh, with this syntax. We would have to, uh, oh, sorry, Poke list. So what we would have to do is call it differently, like uh, print Poke's list, and then we'd actually have to send it a list, right? So long story short, we would just have to surround these inside of square brackets for it to be a valid list here. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same thing, but it just changes the syntax when we call it. So depending on your, your project, you might want to uh, do one or the other. But something I want to emphasize here is uh, this is a huge part of coding where there's multiple ways to do something that are kind of the same but a little different. And part of being an expert coder is knowing the distinction between these nuanced differences and choosing the right one for the job. So just be aware we could use the arbitrary arguments. If for some reason that's not that's a no-go, we could also kind of rewrite this code to use a list instead. And that's kind of what I want to emphasize here. All right, uh, let's uh, move on. There we go. All right, now let's talk about keyword arguments. So the idea here is if there's multiple uh, parameters in a function, we can target individual parameters by name and then send the, the uh, argument directly to that parameter by its name. Uh, so yeah, you can call out a specific argument. So for example, as you can see here, we have this function called print animals. It takes in an animal one, animal two, and animal three. And what if we don't want to send in the parameters in this order, right? What if we don't want to, uh, for whatever reason, as you can see here, we can we can call out the parameters by name and send them in a different order. So instead of sending it at one, two, three, we say, okay, animal three is going to receive this string. Animal 2 is going to receive this one, and Animal 3 is going to receive this one, right? So let's uh, go back to VS Code and, and see this in action. And in a second, I'll explain a more realistic use case for why you want to use this. So, uh, yeah, so, like, let's say, uh, let's just do the print animals thing again. Animal 1. Ah, well, let's let's create a new, uh, so, yeah, let's, let's do another print pokes. So print pokes, poke1, poke2. Poke three and uh, print first poke plus poke one. Cut and paste this very quick. Bada bing, bada boom. And there we go. And if you weren't aware, uh, VS Code nicely, uh, see how these are grayed out? It means that they're not being used yet. So if you're like me and you cut and paste a lot, uh, this can be a hint that you cut and paste and you forgot to fix something. So let me just fix this up to two. As you can see, it becomes highlighted and three. All right, the function is complete. So uh, yeah, we could call the function normally, right? Where we just send the parameters in in the order that it expects. Okay, it's working, right? Or what if we want to uh, specifically target the parameters by name, right? We can instead do this. So we can do print poke. So we can do poke2 equals uh, like drowsy. Poke3 equals hero. And then poke1 equals, eh, say abra. See, as you can see, it, it's still working, right? But the, the distinction here is rather than uh, give it the order that expects, we can kind of send in parameters out of order as we want. And you might ask, so like, why? what's the point? Why is, why is this even useful? Um, the reason for this, and I guess we're kind of jumping the gun here, is uh, sometimes parameters have default values. So let's say poke3 equals pg and poke2 equals radida. So uh, basically the way this, uh, this is useful if you have, like let's say that we want to use the default values for Poke2 and Poke3, we can kind of only send in Poke1 in this way 
and I'll sort. As you can see, it's receiving Abra as Poke 1, and then it's uh, also using the Poke 2 and Poke 3 defaults. And again, we'll, we'll get to this in a second, but this this kind of the, the main use case from what I can see for why you want to use these arguments. But again, the point is that normally you call a function and you send in the parameters in the exact order it expects, but this uh, uh, keyword arguments allows you to uh, just target the arguments by their actual name and send it directly, even if you don't have the correct order is basically what's going on here. Uh, pretty nuanced, sorry if that's uh, uh, kind of hard to understand, but again, I'll, I'll actually also send you the code in Discord so you guys uh, can mess around with this and learn on your own. Okay, let's uh, move on. And again, I, I will take questions at the end. Uh, so, like I was just talking about, default argument values. The idea here is arguments can specify a default value that is used if no argument is sent. So, for example, I have this function print favorite game, and I have the game parameter. As you can see, it's just printing my favorite game is, and then the parameter. So, again, when we, we define the parameter, we can say the parameter equals something. And what this does is, if we don't send any parameter, it will just use this one by default. So, here, if I print and I send in the parameter contra, it's going to print out my favorite game is contra, right? Same thing with 3D World Runner. Uh, I've been on an NES kick recently, so sorry if this is ancient games you guys are not familiar with. But uh, anyway, this line will print, my favorite game is 3D World Runner. And then as you can expect, if we call, uh, sorry, this should be print favorite game, my mistake. But if we call print favorite game without any parameter, again, this is the entire point of the default parameters. It says, okay, you didn't send me anything, I'm just going to start uh, go with the default then. So this line will print, my favorite game is Morrowind, right? So let's uh, pop into the uh, VS Code. And uh, yeah, just prove this again with uh, more Poke functions, I guess. So uh, yeah, def print Pokemon. And let's say Pokemon equals, and eh, what's a good one? Uh, Lickitung. Very cool Pokemon, very horrible stats. You should never use it. Print my favorite. Pokemon is, it's also one of those Pokemon that strangely got like a post evolution in like Diamond or Pearl or something. Anyway, uh, there we go. So you see this function is just going to print out its parameter. So as you can imagine, if we call print Pokemon and send in a parameter like Mr. Mime, it's going to print out my favorite Pokemon is Mr. Mime, right? However, if we send in no parameter, as you can expect, it's going to... Uh, go to this default value, right? This is the entire point of default values. So uh, here, here's another example. Maybe you want, uh, let's say, a function that, uh, that prints out a, a time and date. And it would be useful if you could call this function with no parameter, and it would always default to uh, the current the time and date at this moment, right? Or you could send it in a specific time and date, and it would print out uh, the formatted version of that. So that's kind of an example. But again, the idea here is that we can kind of uh, make people who are using our functions jobs easier by having these defaults so that they can kind of quickly call it and it will uh, kind of start with a default. Uh, all right, let's uh, move on. We only got a few more things here and things are going to get a little complex. I just want to let you know about these things. But uh, everything before this point is very important and everything after this point is kind of uh, more advanced stuff that's maybe above some of your skill level. So after this point, pay attention, but don't worry too much if this is kind of a little more advanced stuff. So scope, uh, let's see. There's there's another, there's a couple other terms for scope. Ian, could you help me out here? Um, I usually refer to a scope. I've heard of like lifetime window. Like uh, what are some other synonyms for scope? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, maybe context. Context, yes, exactly. That, that's that's the one I hear quite a bit. So the idea of the scope and context is uh, functions have a lifetime and they only exist within a certain scope or context. Like this is basically where they live and outside of this they don't live anymore. So in this case, we have the most basic function ever. It just uh, prints something out, right? Actually, we don't want to. Uh, so if we define this variable A inside of this function, it actually only exists in this function. So when this function is done, A dies and goes away forever. So actually, if we try to access A outside of the function, we're going to get an error. So let's pop into VS Code, give this a, a shot here. So print func p, print p, 
to A equals 100. So again, what, what happens if outside of here we try to use A? A is not defined. It's not a variable that exists, right? And the reason for this is because, again, this A only exists within the function scope. It's only alive as long as this function is alive. So if we try to use A out here, A is already dead. We're basically trying to reference a dead variable. So that's why we get this error, right? Let's try some other stuff, though. What happens if we define A before the function? Interesting. Look at this. So I, I, I define A outside of the function as 32. Inside of the function, I set its value to 100. Yet here, look, A is still 32. And this kind of uh, reinforces what I'm saying. This A, crazily enough, is a completely different A than this one inside of the function. They're named the same thing, but this A only exists within the function, whereas this A exists for the scope of the entire project. So when I call A, it's going to use this one because this one is actually already dead. So the major solution to this uh, mind-bending issue here is just don't name your variables the same thing. Be sure to name your variables very specific. So this should be called like B, for example, right? Um, we could have the function modify A. So, uh, so we could do var A equals 100. Of course, we'd have to return it. And then we'd have to set it out here. So A equals print A. I'm sorry, print func. And then, uh, actually, no, that's, we don't need to send a parameter here, my mistake. So we can just uh, return P. And then that's so the idea here is if we want a variable to modify a, uh, I'm sorry, if we want a function to modify a variable, it can be done. We basically just need to modify the variable inside of the function and then return it and then save it. But again, we can't name a variable outside of the function and then name the same variable in the function and then expect it to work because of the scope issue. Again, this is a little bit complex and can kind of throw you for a loop, but uh, I'd recommend kind of messing around with the code I'll give you afterwards to kind of understand this a little better. Okay, so yeah, what we learned today is uh, right off the bat, we uh, recapped why we use functions in the first place. So just kind of a high level uh, description of what we're doing here. And then we covered intermediate stuff. So uh, the three lessons I would say here, or the three most important points are right off the bat, we can send and return any data types we want. So we can do stuff with lists, dictionaries, classes, things like that. And then uh, the second big chunk is that we learned about different special ways of sending in arguments. So we can customize what we send to the function using these mechanisms. And then finally, just more advanced uh, tricky stuff like scope and recursion. So again, why do we use functions? The idea is code reuse. We want to, uh, if we have some code that does does something and we're using it in four different places, we want this code to only exist in one place. So if there's a problem with the code, we can only change it in this one place and then all of these files will have the updated correct code. Conversely, if we had this function as just four uh, different separately defined functions in four different files, well, now we've signed ourselves up for the task is uh, of if this code has problems, we now have to rewrite it four different times. And humans are uh, prone to error. So what if we forget to update the function uh, in this, uh, this file? Well, what that means is uh, we're just going to have bugs in this file now. So again, th the main reason for function is to save us time and energy for not having to rewrite the same thing many times. And this also saves us time in that it eliminates potential bugs. There's a problem with the code. We fix it in one spot. That's it. We're good. Uh, how do we write functions? We might recall we start off with the def keyword. Next up is the function's name, uh, followed by parentheses with uh, zero to X number of parameters, and finally the colon. And then obviously after this is the function body, what actually runs inside the function. Uh, how do we call them? It's simply just the name of the function, parentheses, and then parameters inside the parentheses. And again, the distinction between a parameter versus an argument is parameter is what the parameter is called in the function name, like its actual name. 
and argument is the actual value that you send to that parameter. So in this case, parameter is the parameter and five is the argument. Hopefully that makes sense. Most people use these interchangeably though, so don't worry too much about this distinction, but this uh, distinction does indeed exist. So uh, be aware of that. All right, uh, yeah, so uh, functions are super customizable. As you can see here, we can send and uh, return different data types as arguments. As we saw in our code, uh, we can send in a list and we can do stuff to the list that we would do outside of the function, right? We can iterate over the list. We could do stuff with dictionaries if we wanted. The point here is that functions are super powerful. Any Anything that we might want to do outside of a function, we can stick into a function, including using dictionaries, lists, class instances. And similarly, we can return these as well. So we can do something like take in a dictionary, do something to it, modify it, maybe uh, eliminate duplicate values, for example. And then, uh, yeah, we can return that modified dictionary. So yeah, uh, a function is basically like a tiny little factory for a very specific purpose. You put something in the factory and then you get out what you expect from the factory. And again, factories are designed to be efficient, right? And they're designed to work with kind of any, any reasonable thing you put into it. And this is kind of the, the heart and soul of functions. Uh, we learned about arbitrary arguments. So again, uh, if we if we want to send in one to X number of parameters, we can just put this little uh, asterisk symbol in front of the parameter name. And as you can see here, we can send in only two. We can send in only one. We can send in infinite. So if we put a star before a parameter, we can essentially treat it like a list and we can send in as many parameters or as few as we want. And as we saw, we can also just like basically rewrite this type of function with an actual list, although the syntax of sending stuff to it is a little different. And also do note that what's really going on under the hood is that it actually just combines all of uh, the parameters into a tuple that the function just sees. And remember, a tuple is just a read-only list. So it's kind of like the same thing we were just talking about, where you can send in advanced data types to functions and they can still work. Next up, we had keyword arguments. The idea here is that uh, arguments have names, right? And we can send uh, the data to the parameters out of order if we call them by name. So this is expecting animal one, animal two, and animal three in that order. We could do it out of order. We could say animal three equals this, animal two equals this, and it will uh, it'll still work correctly. Okay, and uh, let's see. Uh, the last uh, special uh, parameter thing we have here is uh, default argument values. So, uh, yeah, the idea here is you can uh, have parameters default to a value. So if you don't send anything to that parameter, it will default to this one. So as you can see here, uh, when I send print favorite game and I send in the parameter contra, it says my favorite game is, and then it, it, uh, game is uh, set to contra. But if I call this and I don't send any parameter, it will go to this default value and will print out my favorite game is Marwood, right? Okay, and uh, last up, we just had the more uh, advanced kind of tricky stuff. So right off the bat, uh, scope, you might recall, functions have, I'm sorry, variables have a lifetime. So if you declare a variable inside of a function, it only exists inside of this function. So we, we declared uh, A inside of print func, but we're trying to access A outside of print func, and we got an error, as we saw. So remember, uh, if you declare a variable inside of a function, you cannot use it outside of the function unless you return it. So keep that in mind. This, this is basically the most important thing you need to understand with scope. Yeah, that's it. That kind of uh, summarizes uh, everything we learned today and concludes our lecture. So thanks everybody for showing up. Um, if you want to see more of this type of stuff, we're doing it every Wednesday. When we have guest speakers, sometimes the schedule will change based on what works best for them. Um, today we were able to do it at the same time that we normally do. So just look forward to announcements for that. If you have feedback for any topics you want to see discussed in the future, let us know because we're flexible and we just want to help you all figure out whatever it is you need to figure out to achieve your career goals. Thanks for stopping by everybody. We're going to cut it off now and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks Andreas.